Good morning, faculty, students, and parents. Welcome to the 2018 National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of our NHS chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope that this will serve to remind you of the standards of the excellence you too are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Our chapter is proud to have been inducting new members since 1988, and with today's ceremony indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence that we represent as our school and community. Throughout this, the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students, in addition to the strong academic records which establish the eligibility for membership. Our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations, and we serve our school and community. We are proud of the record of accomplishment and welcome these new members who bring new energy in support of our continuing work as NHS member. At this time, our principal, Mrs. Guerin, will come with greetings. Thank you, Esmeralda. Welcome, parents. I'm sure you're very proud today. Inductees. Each of you are here today because you have earned the privilege to be part of the National Honor Society. You were selected based on scholarship and recommended by your teachers based on your character. Those of you who are graduating have come to learn how much service and leadership are a part of NHS. Um, those of you being inducted, you will have the same opportunity to grow through practicing these qualities. Within the NHS framework, we talk about earning a certain number of service hours, attending meetings, keeping a high GPA, and demonstrating good character. At BRIM, it's no small feat to reach the academic accomplishments you all have met. You've worked hard, you studied through lunches, you asked for help, you stuck around after school to ensure your success. For this, I'm very proud. However, beyond that, and I would say arguably more important, is you were deemed leaders by your teachers and staff. Now, as you transition into NHS members of our school, I ask you to remember that leadership isn't just being in charge of other people. In order to be a leader of others, you must first successfully lead yourselves. It takes hard work to succeed, and you alone are the one to get yourself out of bed every day, day to do what you gotta do to be successful. Character is the most basic and also most important quality of the NHS. This isn't measured by one time, but rather overall instances in our time. It's our, char our character is what we do when no one is looking. The right decision rarely is one that's easy to make. Many times, no one will actually know our thoughts or hear what we are tempted to do. It is our actions that determine the true measure of ourselves. Do you guys always have a smile, a positive word, a good attitude? Can people trust what you say, even if, they don't, if it's what they don't want to hear? Are you courteous? Are you respectful? Do you think about what you say before you say it? Do you seek to grow as a person or simply seek to get recognition or get by? Character is something that must be practiced. Sometimes you mess up and that's okay. You're high schoolers. It's expected. But character is showing when you, apologizing when you know you've made a mistake. True character is being able to admit when you're wrong, when you've missed the boat, when you didn't do the right thing. With true character, there's no excuses, only acceptance, there's no backpedaling, there's only forward thinking. Inductees, this is a lot of pressure. We have high expectations for you all. If you look at the kids in the black shirts, these are the leaders of our school. These are the ones that make me so proud and honored to be a principal at Brim. I hope you keep in mind the four ideals of the National Honor Society as you continue with your high school career. You've achieved so much already, and this is just the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Barron. 
NHS, it is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that membership in the Dr. Charles E. Brewer Medical Arts High School Chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by this candidates through the effective demonstration of the four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of the chapter will now review these qualities for candidates. NHS member, class of 2018, Destiny Lamb will now present scholarship. Scholarship. Scholarship means a commitment to learning, a student is willing to spend hours in reading and study. Knowing the last benefits of a cultivated mind, we should continue to learn even when formal education has ended. For education ends only with life. Edu not, hmm. Knowledge is one of the great elements in life which leads to the highest success and it can be acquired only in one way through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light which illuminates the future. Candidates have the choice to continually expand the world through opportunities inherent in scholarship. opportunities arise to help others. Willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or without recognition is the quality we seek in our membership. We are committed to the idea of volunteering our time and abilities to the creation of a better tomorrow. I like the candle representing service. Self-control. We must be in reality 
what we wish to appear to others by demonstrating such qualities such as reliability, honesty, and sincerity. We may have food to prove by example that we value character. I like the candle representing character. Secretary Nadia Shakir will now read the poem, Principles of Life. <laughs> Scholarship. Holding the fruits of education in our hands, trying our best to achieve our academic goals and plans. Using our brains to absorb as much info as we can for an exam. No matter what anyone tells us, we know our truth. Our future awaits and we will waste no time to catch up to it. Service. We aspire people that help whoever is in need. Their hearts often filled with gold when given. So we hope this principle will respect. Serving others and helping our peers is our gracious prospect. We aid despite what others think of our fate, considering the good but nothing of hate. Character. Being humble and kind, that's what they will find. A group of people that hold themselves high, trying to push the negativity out because it can sometimes take a place in our minds. Being fair and considerate of time to hold the candles and spark the light. Leadership. Being the glue that brings everyone together, knowing our place that nothing lasts forever. Leading individuals into a place of greatness, we are a genius generation and we will not be defeated. Persevere and rise above the status quo. Despite some anxiety, we embrace liberty, peace, and resilience as the National Honor Society. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Now we will have our introduction of the speaker by Cameron Cox. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations, new inductees. Um, I will now introduce our guest speaker. Um, Dr. Oscar Holmes IV is an assistant professor of management and direct, director of access and outreach for business education at Rutgers School of Business Camden, where he teaches executive education, graduate and undergraduate courses in leadership and managing human capital, organizational behavior, conflict resolution and negotiation, and crisis management. His research examines how leaders can it maximize productivity and well-being through fostering more inclusive environments and has been published in several top-tier management journals and books. He earned a PhD and Master in MA in Management at the University of Alabama, MLA from the University of Richmond, and a BS with honors from Virginia Commonwealth University. He is also a 2006 alum of Stanford University Graduate School of Business, Summer Institute, and General Management. He is a resident expert for Psycho Psychology Today, PT, and hosts his own PT column entitled Beyond the Cubicle, Manage Managing Human Capital. While on, while on sabbat sabbatical from Rutgers in 2006, he was a visiting research professor of management at the Le LeBeau College of Business at Drexel University and a research fellow at the University of Pretoria, South Africa. In addition to his scholarship being covered in various new outlets, news outlets, he is a highly sought after speaker, organizations consultant, and has made a number of media appearances that include Huffington Post Live, television, and radio interviews. Everyone please introduce uh, Dr. Astro Holmes before. Thank you, Ms. Wynn, for the invitation to be here today. I was in the National Honor Society when I was in high school, so I know how important this moment is for all of you and how hard you work to achieve this goal. 
So congratulations to all the National Honor Society members and inductees. Congratulations for your hard work. I know it's customary for speakers to give students uh, a three or four or five step plan on how to be successful at these type of, types of events, but I'm not gonna do that this morning. Instead, I wanna talk to each of you about how I wish more people would view success. To me, success is not about making a lot of money or obtaining some level of celebrity, because social media is big, so anybody can go viral these days, or getting a lot of degrees. To me, success is living a life where you have the honor to tell others, thank you. Now, I'm not talking about those everyday thank yous. You know, someone opens the door for you, you say thank you. Someone does something for you, you say thank you. I'm talking about those huge, honored thank yous. When you are absolutely honored to tell people thank you. So this morning, I'm going to share just a little bit about my journey to success by sharing with you a few of the honored thank yous that I've had thus far in my life. And I hope that my story inspire each of you to work towards your own honor. Thank you. So not to prolong the story too much, uh, but my first honor thank yous must go to a few of my elementary school teachers. You can probably tell from my accent, I'm not from New Jersey. I'm from a rural town outside of Richmond, Virginia, where we had one stoplight and most of us qualify for either free or reduced school lunch. It must have been in the first or second grade, but I remember being taken out one of my classes and being placed in another class. Apparently my teachers saw something in me and they felt I needed a more challenging environment. So I was placed in gifted and talented classes. Just think, where would I be today if it wasn't for those teachers who took special interest in me and gave me the opportunity to push myself even harder academically and to reach my fullest potential. Now, of course, all students don't need to be in gifted and talented classes to reach their fullest potential. But I know that I may not have been as driven and as confident and as academically prepared to compete with my colleagues at the highest level that's expected of me now in academia had I not been put on that track since elementary school. So my first honor thank yous go to my Lawson Merritt elementary school teachers. And I imagine that many of you had those special teachers as well that saw something in each of you to put you on this track to be inducted and be members of the National Honor Society. The gifted and talented track proved to be a really great choice for me. I excelled in elementary and middle school and was well prepared for high school. So everything was going well for me in high school until December 28, 1994. I remember that night very vividly because we were on Christmas break from school and I woke up with horrible pains in my stomach. Now, of course, I've never been pregnant, but I imagine being pregnant must have felt those pains similar to that. So I had so many pains in my stomach and I woke up crying so I eventually woke, woke my parents up and they took me to the emergency room. I stayed there for a few hours and the physicians finally sent me home with some pain medicine and they said that I had some muscle spasms. The medicine worked for a while controlling the pain, but eventually it wore off and I had to take more medicine more often, which meant I was basically overdosing on pain medicine. In addition to the pain being more frequent, I also noticed I was waking up every morning drenched in night sweats. And I was losing a lot of weight. Concerned, my parents took me to a university hospital this time. They ran more tests to send me home with stronger medicine. It worked for a while, but eventually the pain came back. I still had night sweats. I still was vomiting. And I was still losing weight. So I began to overdose again. My parents and teachers became even more worried when I was taken back to the university hospital. I was down from a weight of 150 just a few months ago to about 109 pounds at 14 years old. God, what I wouldn't give to get back to the hundreds. <sighs> it's that college weight. <laughs> it's stress. 
This time I stayed in the hospital for a week. And on March 14, 1995, I was told I had Hodgkin's disease. Now my 14 year old self didn't know what Hodgkin's disease was, but I later found out that Hodgkin's disease is a cancer of the lymph nodes. And I was in stage four, which is the most advanced stage of the cancer. So immediately my whole life changed. One day I was a happy, normal high school student, and the next I was a very sick high school student fighting for my life and spending a lot of time at the hospital. But again, I'm so honored to say thank you to my high school teachers, classmates, and community because they rallied around me and supported me 100%. My treatment plan for Hodgkin's disease was supposed to be six months of chemotherapy, and then I would do a month of radiation therapy, and then I was supposed to be cured. So chemotherapy was once a week, it lasted a few hours, but radiation therapy was every day, five days a week, and lasted about 30 minutes. So I did my six months of chemotherapy and began my everyday radiation therapy treatments. But about two weeks into my radiation therapy, I began feeling massive pains in my chest. My physicians were concerned, so they did an alpha biopsy in my sternum, and they revealed that my cancer came back, and I was now in stage 4B Hodgkin's disease, which is a more advanced, advanced stage of the cancer. So my teachers always said that I was advanced, so I guess my cancer had to be advanced as well. So I'm like, okay, what do we do now? My physicians told me point blank that the last chance of my survival was to undergo a bone marrow transplant since the radiation therapy wasn't working. So they switched me back to once a week intensive chemotherapy to do what they could in preparation for the bone marrow transplant. Now believe it or not, this actually worked better for me because I no longer had to do the one hour drives back and forth to the hospital for radiation therapy every day, which meant I didn't have to miss as much school and catch up on as much work. Because believe it or not, cancer or no cancer, I still had to do all of my school work. My parents and teachers made sure of that. But luckily for me, I was able to use my own bone marrow, so I didn't have to worry about trying to get a match from someone else. So on January 6, 1997, I went into the hospital for my bone marrow transplant, knowing this was the last chance of survival for me. And unfortunately, I had gone to at least three funerals of friends I made in the hospital who were all around my age, but who lost their battle with cancer. So the doctors told me that the minimum time that I would have to stay at the hospital was three weeks. So I made that my new goal. And on January 24th, 1997, exactly three weeks, I was able to be released from the hospital and go home. Now, I still couldn't go back to high school at this time because my immune system was too weak. But luckily, I had great teachers while I was in the hospital and had great teachers who came to my house when I was released. Because all of the, before all of the health issues that I had as a high school student, uh, one of my dreams was to graduate valedictorian of my high school class. And I'm honored to say thank you to my entire healthcare team and teachers for all of the help that they gave me throughout all of my health issues. Uh, because in June 1999, I graduated valedictorian of my high school class. <laughs> Although I could have gone to a lot of top universities, uh, I only wanted to go to VCU. The medical staff there saved my life, so I didn't consider going anywhere else. It took me two and a half years to earn my degree with honors from VCU, since I took a full course load and it went all year round. Although it wasn't anywhere in my initial career plans, I returned to my high school alma mater as a teacher, hoping to give back to the school community that gave so much to me. I taught at that great school for two years before moving on with my career, and I'm honored to have those wonderful colleagues who believed in me and mentored me. So as my career progressed, I knew I wanted a PhD. So when it was time to apply to PhD programs, Northwestern or Harvard, they were my dream school. My alma mater, ECU, was my safe school. So after applying to 12 universities, after a few months, all my letters came back in and I was rejected from every last PhD program. I was devastated. I had never failed at anything before, at least nothing academically. 
But getting rejected from Harvard or, North, or Northwestern is one thing. But getting rejected from my alma mater, I was like, really? Really, you see you? After all we've been through? Really? What was also devastating for me was that PhD programs only admit students once a year. So I had to wait an entire year before I could reapply. But I must say thank you to all of those schools that rejected me because it taught me a valuable life lesson, which is my self-worth isn't tied to my success or achievements or career, and neither is yours. I don't always have to get it right every time, and neither do any of you. And I'm good enough just as I am, and so are you. So I got rejected from all of those PhD programs, so how am I standing in front of you today with a PhD in management? Well, after I licked my wounds and cried, and licked my wounds again and cried some more, I figured out what I did wrong. The first time around, I corrected it and applied again. And this time I got into a PhD program the next year. I had a long and hard road in my PhD program. But after five years of full-time study on March 12, 2013, I defended my dissertation and became Dr. Holmes. And for that, I have to say a huge, huge thank you to all my university professors and classmates at the University of Alabama who taught me, who mentored me, who believed in me. So today, as a professor at Rockwell School of Business, Camden, as Cameron mentioned, I teach executives, MBA students, undergraduates, and management courses. I provide service to my discipline, university, and community, and most importantly, conduct high quality scientific research. I am so thankful to be able to wake up each morning doing a job that I absolutely love, living a life that I never thought was possible for me. For this little poor boy, well, not so little anymore, but this poor boy from this rural town in King Queen County, Virginia. We all have different definitions of success, but I encourage all of you to think about success with regard to those honored thank yous that you can get people. Again, I'm not talking about those every day and have those opportunities to truly be honored to tell people thank you. You may never be rich or famous, God knows I'm not, but if you live your life where you have numerous opportunities to tell others that you're honored to say thank you to them, you would have lived a successful life. NHS members and inductees, I'm honored to be here to speak to you. And I want to tell you thank you for this opportunity. You have been a joy to me and added to my life. So thank you. Congratulations. the induction of new members. Ibn Coleman will call the names of our candidates. Genesis and Aaron, please come forward. And now as your name is called, please step forward onto the stage to receive your token of membership and sign the official chapter of registry. China Felix Baby, class of 2018. Asia Albert, class of 2019. Siande Horsey, class of 2019.
Mary Lidium, class of 2019. Kanaya Thomas, class of 2019. Danasia Honus, class of 2020. <laughs> Adira Mackin, class of 2020. Yes. <laughs> Abigail Mercado, Mercado, sorry, class of 2020. <laughs> Janiah Taylor, class of 2020. <laughs> Congratulations to all the 2017 and 2018 NHS investors for the first Dr. Tony chapter of NHS. I pledge to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands and will maintain and encourage high standards of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Congratulations.
Please welcome our advisor, Ms. Nguyen, who will offer congratulatory remarks to the new members. students, it is with great pleasure to induct these wonderful young women to Dr. Charles Ebram High School National Honor Society. I enjoyed this day tremendously and am pleased and proud of the accomplishment of today's inductees. You are most deserving and, offers, and I can offer sincere congratulations. Thank you for all the ways you have enriched our school either academically, athletically, or through community service. Welcome to NHS. Operations Manager Ms. Goodman and our advisor Ms. Nguyen and the members of the NHS for their hard work in organizing this year's induction ceremony. Please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. Thank you all for attending our NHS induction ceremony. In just a moment, the new inductees will recess, after which you are all invited to join us in the Media Center for refreshments in their honor. But before doing so, please join me once again in applauding all of our new NHS members. Thank you, and now will everyone please stand as our newest members of the NHS team.